let me tell it to you you will hear it from here i've spoken about this but probably lightly for my undergraduate i had to pay for my own tuition so it was a very hard time and i asked god may i get a chance to be sponsored the first time i applied for a master's scholarship i was rejected it hit me like it pushed me down <laughs> I can't even describe like I say it genuinely and openly and honestly it made me shrink this was an opportunity I was looking so like forward to and like my whole mind was thinking oh my god I need to get into this master's scholarship if someone met me randomly like abruptly I'd not scripted anything and they just put me on the spot and told me hi Maria how did you join bioinformatics how can I join this is how I would explain it and I want to share my story to give an, an idea or to give like a bit of context how i landed up in bioinformatics and the tips that have worked for me and how i would advise someone who is starting out and they want to know more about it so let's get into it but do remember to subscribe to my youtube channel share this video to someone that you think it will help or it will guide the new way or form or format of course i'll appreciate it very much most of the times i've shared about uh, my journey in bioinformatics in data science i've gotten such questions of how did you join or if I want to join where do I start from and I thought if I give a part of my story or it would like give a better kind of context so you can probably see how you can try to navigate around and I'll try to share tips. First of all I want to say the journey isn't like a straight path in all honesty like I didn't know I would end up in data science or in bioinformatics because then when I was starting out it was mostly me being a student in the medics like a student in biomedics, biomedical laboratory technology because that's the course I did during my undergrad at Makere and it wasn't clear in any sense I just went into it and like I just strode along until I started to see things make sense some things started to get clear opportunities started to come so for the start I can say sometimes at some point in life things won't be clear right now I don't think I have the entire full picture but I've gotten an idea of exactly what I want to do I've gotten to learn what um, I can contribute to the scientific world to the world of bioinformatics and data science I've also learned that I can inspire people out there to learn bioinformatics during my last semester of my undergraduate that is the third semester we got introduced to like one of the sub um, they used to, we used to call them modules. It wasn't an entire course unit on its own, but it was just a sub-module of bioinformatics. So when they were introducing it to us, they were telling us, um, I remember the words of the instructor that, that time. He told us, this course is not common here. It's a new area of study. And um, there are some people in Nairobi doing it. There is a bigger group of people doing it in South Africa. And most of the people, of course, are in like the other worlds. Because then I was in Uganda, so they were telling us most people are in the US, UK that are doing bioinformatics. So they explained it to us. It was honestly purely introductory. But I don't know, for that moment, I was paying a lot of attention <laughs> and I was very interested. So after that class, I went and asked the lecturer then, asked him, hi, um, you introduced something that was very interesting. You talked about all this bioinformatics thing. I'm interested. It sounds like something I would do. I want to tell you exactly what it means, but like I'm trying to show you an idea of how I reached out to go and ask about this very interesting field of science that is new, that few people are doing in Uganda, as there are not as many people doing this thing. Like it was, the introduction was fascinating. And for me, as like curious, something was triggered. I was like, I need to find out exactly what that is. It wasn't again a full course offered in Macquarie University. It's a, a branch of molecular biology. So there was, Dr. Chisaka, there's Dr. Charles Drago, who was my supervisor at undergrad, and then there was Dr. Jared Mboa, who is now my mentor, and uh, we've walked the journey together. Anyway, so when I reached out, they're like, oh, you're interested, let me introduce you another person who is like more of an expert, he's been doing this kind of work, and he has the best connections. The person who has uh, connected me so much and made my career path clearer than it was then, of course. So um, that is like a bit of mix of how I got introduced to bioinformatics. But what is bioinformatics? Every time I talk about bioinformatics, I talk about these things I'm doing, I don't think many people understand it and it's completely normal for people not to understand bioinformatics because it's a new field of study in Uganda. Of course out here, currently I'm shooting this from the US, currently like so many people know about it and it's gotten popular. 
But bioinformatics, to put it simply, is an interdisciplinary field of science that combines the principles of biology, combines math and computers. So some people like to describe it as computational biology because you get data from living things from animals, from plants, and then you use computers, the computer technology, the statistics, the algorithms to make sense out of the biological data. Let me give you an example. If they want to find out why you are resistant to a particular drug, why you're not responding as you should, maybe they want to find out like the causative agent of the disease you're suffering from. There are so many things that happen in the background. But the people that get to analyze this data and try to make sense of it is what I would simply refer to as bioinformatics scientists. So what we basically do is we analyze biological data. We use algorithms, computers, tools, and all um, the fascinating technology to try and analyze this kind of data. Of course, bioinformatics keeps on evolving, and currently we are seeing a lot of applications of machine learning to analyze clinical data. It can be data from hospitals, data from surveillance and treatment and things like that. Well, after I got introduced to now my mentor, but then I didn't think would like go such a long way. I was very curious, of course, and I was very interested and I was ready to be mentored at that time. One of the things he really did for me was to hold my hand, like not literally, but like uh, in the career path of stay in touch with me. Let's see how you can get to know more about it. Let's look for opportunities. Let's see how you can, I mean, prove that you actually want to do the course. <laughs> now guys, do not underplay the importance of mentorships, of having someone who has already gone before you. You know what they say, that a mentor is someone who has like uh, taken a thousand steps, so yours are simplified, so your journey is smoother, and they can guide you and tell you, you know what, this is the route to take, this is what works in the field that we are in, here is how you can apply your principles, here is how you can, you know, like different things. So mentorships are very vital. I can tell you that for all my um, for all my academic journey, because I'm still in academia, but like for all my career growth and journey, I highly appreciate having had a mentor who has been in the field that I aspire to make an impact. And um, what has happened is usually a mentor will help you and guide you and they will tell you opportunities if they're out there. For example, I've had the privilege and chance to study on scholarships for my master's. It was all because um, I had mentorship. I think a mentor is someone who is more experienced, who provides guidance and um, support and they have knowledge and experience in a particular field to another person who is less exposed, less experienced, but like they're in the same career path. For example, if I'm in bioinformatics, I'm just starting out, my mentor is someone who has already taken like steps further in the career of bioinformatics and they already have connections, they have the expertise, they have the knowledge, they can provide and offer guidance and they can like help me on my path. So I like to look out for such people or I'd like to refer to those as mentors so you figure out exactly who is this one person that is doing so well in the field that I want to go in and then you let your interests known to them. Tell them hi, reach out sometimes, write emails, like be professional about it and tell them like get their contact. Sometimes you will find it like through a friend, through a colleague, different ways and write to them, tell them hi, my name, introduce yourself in the way that makes sense. My name is Mariana Maganda. I have been doing this and that. How can I get supported? I'd love for you to take me on as your mentee and yeah, wait for their feedback. If they don't, maybe write back, be uh, aggressive about it, but like not in a bad way, be assertive, not in a bad way, like professional about it. And in the email, you can share like a bit of your CV, so you make it easier for them, so that when they're writing back, they're not asking you for your CV, like make the journey simple and like quick for yourself and for the person you're reaching out to, see that this person is serious about what they want, they've gone an extra mile of providing like a CV for me to refer to, so I know if I can either work with them, if I can help them, if I can recommend them to another person, because sometimes you reach out to a mentor, prospective mentor, but they are not willing to take on because of the workload they have, or they know someone who is better that can take you on. You see how then you're getting into just like a wider kind of network, which is another point I'll come on to. But like that's how you start to build professional um, relationships with people. And again, always remember to keep it very professional. These are people that are busy. If you send an email and you don't get a response, it may be three or 
four days right back just to follow up and you send to three or four people at least one of them will say yes at least one of them attend gatherings or uh, events that have people in the field that you want to be i think that's one of the easiest ways like be interested to find out what workshops are there what conferences are there what seminars are there because in such settings that's when you hear of what kind of work people are doing you'll hear of this person working on a particular grant someone has a research project they're looking for research fellows that's how you get to know what kind of work is being done out there otherwise if you're not in spaces where people are doing the things you want it's less likely that you know more about them and so this information sometimes won't come to you until you go out to look for it that's the other thing I can recommend like be on the look for the opportunities like expose yourself to opportunities because that's one of the best ways to gain visibility people will get to see you you'll become like consistently uh, seen in their eyes and you're easily like remembered so even if imagine you <laughs> and I think I mentioned this imagine you attend workshop seminars, not that every of them, but of course attend those that speak to you and those that are in line with the things you want to do. Imagine you attend such things and then one time you go to like a panel and they're interviewing and these people like have seen you. First of all, when you're present in such seminars, you're participating actively. You like, you genuinely are present and learning, not just there for the vibes and things like that. It is easy for them to um, give you the benefit of doubt and say, you know what? This young man, this young lady has been around. We have seen her. Let us give her like a chance to see how we can work with her. And yeah, sometimes that can be a start of something very beautiful. So I highly recommend that attend workshops, seminars. And some of these things are available, like they are at your disposal. But if you're not intentionally looking for them, you will miss them. Sometimes it's like things that are just hung around campuses, around corridors. What my mentor did at the time was to introduce to me to the online courses, which uh, the platforms are Coursera and FutureLearn. I'm going to link these uh, down below. You can just Google Coursera and then it will take you to like, of course, the site. It is open for anyone to use and anyone to access. And the beauty about Coursera is that there is courses about any field that you know under the sun. These courses are publicly available. Some of them are for paying, some of them are free of charge and this is the trick so if you choose there is beginner level there is intermediate and then there is the expert level so when you're starting out on um, any field of area you don't know much about it's always advised to start from like beginner level in fact if you could you just start like from zero level if there is such a thing so that you get introduced like the concept sinking well and so i applied now this is the trick when you go to coursera the online platform there is um where you apply for financial aid and most of the times, almost always, they'll give you the course, they'll waive it for you. And what I mean is you you choose if you're from a low and middle income country. I'm speaking to the people that do not have the money to pay for these courses because they're quite expensive if you're going to pay. But like because I got the chance to do these courses free of charge, I'll tell you the route I took and how that worked out for me. So when you go on Coursera, open an account and then register, right? And so once you do that, go ahead and look for the courses you want to do in any area. In this instance, it will be bioinformatics or data science or machine learning whichever field it is you want to look for there are so many courses like countless of them so you look and then under the course that you want to do you'll see if it is available for financial aid for the courses that don't have that apply for financial aid that you have to pay which doesn't hurt because if it's education if it is something you want to learn then it's an investment in yourself and i would highly recommend that any chance you get to invest in yourself take it upon because at the end of the day you will reap you'll get lots of return on investment anyways let's take the route that i used where i didn't pay for any of the coursera courses but they were very fundamental in my starting out of bioinformatics and other things that i'm going to share as we go so once you do that you apply the course usually they take about two weeks to get back to you and like i said it's almost a hundred percent certain that once you include the course you want to do, you explain why you can't pay. Most of the times you'll just tell them I'm not in position to pay. I'm from a low and middle income country. These are the things you put in your application and then you show your interest. Sometimes they give you like a cup of words. They'll tell you in about 200 words. So what I do or what I did is I have a template that for anything I'm interested in, once I know that it lasts for this particular number of words, I use a template that I keep modifying every time because now you're not going to just apply for one course. 
on Coursera or on Future Learn, which is another platform I want to share briefly but like why i'm emphasizing on coursera is that coursera has such like a wide range of courses and they're very um recognizable in terms of when you're applying for opportunities and things like that it is one of those things you can do in your free time the courses don't take a long while yeah click on apply for financial aid then fill in the details and that's precisely it wait for two weeks and then see how they've given you the course to do so usually they'll give you like um you'll go through videos that are pre-recorded for you to tell you about the area of study that you're interested in and then after that you'll have to do exercises that you submit so you can be graded and after you're graded you'll get a certificate for it that's if you've passed there is a pass mark for each of the online courses you can do a thousand courses if you want to you can do a course every after two weeks so it depends on exactly where you are in life how much time you have and how badly you want to do certain things and um I mean it's 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 again it's not it's relative to where you are in life. <laughs> you can only do what you can do like at the time that you can. Okay, was that supposed to be a riddle? <laughs> I don't know. That's exactly how I got the concepts, the ideas there. You can actually just type in bioinformatics for beginners or maybe machine learning for beginners. Do you remember if you are from a low and middle income country, include it in your application so they can waive the payments for you. If you are a student, tell them I currently don't have a job, so I'm not in position to pay for this course, but I'd love to take one. Um, a beginner course introductory course in bioinformatics so i can get an idea of it your goal your idea your passion like your long-term uh, career plan is to contribute to the world of infectious diseases that's if that's what you're interested in so i'm kind of giving you the template i used i don't know if you're taking notes <laughs> describe this kind of thing until you make the 200 words that they want and then submit sit back and wait until you're approved usually at most they take about two weeks which is a good time and the other thing i would recommend is don't apply for one course only because it takes two weeks for them to get back to you i would recommend that you apply for at least four courses if that is quite overwhelming again it comes back to how much time you have and where you're at in life and how much investment you can put into in terms of time and um, concentration for you to do the courses and pass them but let them be related so that after one you go into another with now the introduction of chat gpt you can even get the template that you can use to apply for your financial aid go for it and wait and get into just the area of study that you want to like i'm not really tying you down to bioinformatics but i'm only saying like it's one of those things that you can do if you want to on the internet now with like <laughs> a lot of things happening on the internet sometimes you need to sieve out and see which platforms you're on which platforms you need to be added onto because there are particular groups and networks that have these things that just throw in there sometimes these are even travel fellowships and grants and like so many different things that are being thrown here and there so it's upon you to just be on the look actively on the look for such things apply for them and apply as many times as they are i can't stress the fact that many times you will get rejected that's the other thing like in my <laughs> you know when i talk about maybe when people see me i don't know what your opinion is but like when people see me and i'm probably doing all these things currently um like in the spaces i'm in they think i have gotten admitted to everything i have applied for let me tell it to you you will hear it from here from my mouth the first time i applied for a master's scholarship i was rejected it hit me like it pushed me down <laughs> i can't even describe like i say it genuinely and openly and honestly it made me shrink like i felt so bad because this was an opportunity i was looking so like forward to and like my whole mind was thinking oh my god i need to get into this master's scholarship because again i've spoken about this but probably lightly for my undergraduate i had to pay for my own tuition so it was a very hard time and i asked god may i get a chance to be sponsored so um we go ahead we apply for this master's thing and yeah I was not called but anyway fast forward of course I got the chance and got accepted and so it comes down to once you rejected do not stop at that like apply but it was starting to get a little cold so I needed to cover myself up anyway um, we were still talking about some of the strategies that I would highly recommend and the things that have worked for me apply and apply and apply as many times as they are do not give up because the first time you apply it might not go through but like just keep positive and 
feel the emotions of you being rejected, but go ahead and apply again because that is inevitable. I don't think there is someone out there who can say they've gotten everything they've applied for, so be that person who keeps chasing whatever they want relentlessly until you get yes. Today I was speaking to someone who was telling me, if you want something, go for it. The worst they can say is a no, and that's been the principle always. The worst someone can say is a no, but at least you've made the step. You've taken it upon yourself to go ahead and ask for what you want or to apply for what you want. So do not stop at a rejection. Feel the emotions. If you want to cry, cry it off. Rant about it. Sometimes use whatever words you want. Okay, not like the bad words, not the cast words. But like take it in, like feel the emotion of being rejected. But then collect yourself up, get back to the grind because that's how we're moving. Otherwise, if you are going to be beaten once and then you stay shy about it forever, it doesn't help. We don't do that around here. No, hear me girl, hear me sister, hear me brother. Because this is for everyone. Don't stop at a rejection. I mean, at the end of the day, it is just that one bad rejection. It doesn't matter if there are three or four. But the moment you get a yes for a particular thing that you've been relentlessly praying and applying for or whichever field, that yes will give you so many reasons why the no's were there to start with. So I think it's a nice way to look at a rejection as a way to... Yeah, like redirect yourself in a sense. You see, it sounds cheesy when someone says rejections are redirections, but the moment you get a yes from something that is so important and meaningful and even more valuable to you, you will forget that you'll forget the pain of the previous rejections. And that's like that's one of the things I've gotten to experience. Like there's so many things where I said no or like the sh the door was shut where I was sent um, that email of we regret to inform you that <laughs> you see how you apply for something and then you're praying and you're just basically crossing your fingers that they pick on you and then they send you an email and tell you thank you for your application but we regret to inform you i mean it will feel bad but like take it in feel bad and then wake up brush it off and say we are moving forward. How can I improve my previous application? Where do I need to improve my um, space right now? And like where I'm at mentally or how I apply? Do I need to find like better ref referees? Do I need like different things, honestly? Like it's so many things. And that's why I'm saying like sometimes it's not just one thing. Sometimes it's not because you're not fit for the role, but it's because uh, at the moment maybe there's a particular number of people they wanted and you're, it was not just your thing. When your thing finds you, you will know. And the thing is the beauty about um, applying many times is that you increase your chances of being selected and chosen for. So yeah, I'd highly recommend that apply as many times as you can and do not stop at a rejection because who knows what if your next application is the one that they take you on and the rest will be history. So go for it and I wish you luck. <laughs> yes, so the other thing I want to talk about is like networking. As you're attending these events, as you're attending the seminars and workshops, do not stop at just the vibe of it. But while you're there, talk to people about the things you do. I think networking, sometimes the word is used uh, in, the, in, in different forms, like in different ways to mean exactly networking. But like put yourself out there in the spaces that you want to be in. And while you're there, do like the job of introducing yourself. Tell people what your strengths are. Tell people what you're capable of. Tell people what you'd like to learn. Because it's not just about you speaking about what you do best. Because if you do best, then like sometimes it will come off as, are you teachable? Are you, you know, that kind of thing. So be the person. First of all, talk about the things you can do, but also tell people what you want to learn. Because sometimes they're not looking for an expert. Sometimes they're looking for someone to teach. I don't know if that makes sense. So if you come off and tell people, oh, I do this, I do that, like, I don't know, like, make it a natural kind of um, engagement in the sense of, I can do this, but I'm also willing to learn. I am fascinated about such applications. I want to find out more. I want to see how I can improve my skills. Because again, like I said, sometimes they're not looking for an expert. They're looking for someone who is teachable, someone who can be trained, someone that they can uh, take on. So do remember that and consider that even in your applications and the things you include. Like, because if you're looking for, if it's like um, a research grant and they're looking for 
people to teach, like it's a training ground and things like that. You have to come in the sense of I am here, I am willing to learn, and I am ready. This is what I can do. This is my strength as a candidate, but this is what I would want to learn. So I'm able to contribute to your field, to your area, after I have learned all these different skills. So yeah, I'd like to mention that as well. Be teachable and say the things you want to learn. Do not underplay the importance of using the internet the right way. We spend a lot of time on internet and that is completely fine. But like I said, there are so many platforms, so many groups, so many, um, so many websites that you can find very important information. So while you're spending your time on the internet, even if it's, I can't even tell you, sometime I found someone on Instagram posting about something I was very interested in. It is so funny, like, as just, she's one of the people that talks about things I resonate with. She's a person I relate to a lot. So one time I was just watching her stories and she mentions about this one uh, call that was out there and I applied for it. The fact that I was able to get such information from a platform as Instagram where everyone would think, you know what, it's only vibes and that's all. Like, So in whichever space you're in, if your eyes are tuned to looking for something, I don't know, somehow it will... God will use, cause the universe to conspire and bring whatever you want <laughs> to just be in your space. So it's upon you to be on the look, like to be on the look and know that in whichever sphere you're in, you're able to get whatever information. And it makes sense. So if you are um, on those platforms, you're on TikTok. TikTok, by the way, as much as it has a lot of like challenges, dance strokes and conspiracy theories, so many things, it's such a learning platform you can learn anything like you can basically sit and watch a series of someone teaching and training something so it's so many different things in fact if you went to tiktok right now and put and typed in maybe machine learning you will see that they bring you like very many um links very many videos about people describing machine learning the different fields they're applying these skills in if you put in like bioinformatics you'll find that they're bringing you a well of information that you can't even digest in one day so how about the time we spend scrolling on all these platforms for the dance challenges and finding out which person is doing what some random thing how about we spend it just dedicate like a few minutes of your scrolling time to look for something that you're interested in so that you can benefit from it that's what i would say <laughs> find communities a community is like a, a group of people that are doing related things in like simple terms but like why communities are so important is because they share lots of uh, resources they share opportunities they share like advice sometimes they have like training sessions where they just have like minis talk about particular things so in your area if there is no community then be the person to start that community if you're interested about a thing just tell people we'll be meeting maybe once a week let's see how we can discuss a b and c and that way you are like increasing the span of getting to know a lot of information in a very short time because you find that maybe from your community someone knows something about something i don't even make it like someone knows either a resource knows a person or that person can be a link to what you're looking for so it's easier when it's like um a group as of it's easier when it's a group of people that are like-minded that are after the same thing it's easier to find and share uh, resources in that regard so find yourself a community of people that are doing the things that you want as you're networking as you're figuring out your way in career in the interest of this video because i was talking about bioinformatics and data science and how you can find yourself like in this field and how you can try to figure out a footing for yourself if you're a beginner i wanted to share about the platforms i've used so there is uh, Coursera which I've spent like some time on trying to explain and I'll share the link down below for you to go and create an account and join. There is FutureLearn. FutureLearn is like another platform that helps you to get introductory courses, beginner kind of courses. FutureLearn has like simpler things to do. I don't know if so that's a thing but like it's simpler things and then Coursera tries to bring to you a more uh, concretized kind of approach in my opinion. So I've captured like a few 
platforms that I want to share with you so I don't forget any of them. One of them is biomatics.org. This platform offers like free courses in R, in Python. These are programming languages for people that are analyzing data that is to do with bioinformatics and data science in general. It offers such resources. It includes tutorials. It's a community-driven kind of platform that allows you to get access to software tools, to resources. It's And then there is another platform called Cargo. So Cargo has like very wide data sets and it actually runs competitions. There is always like a prize for the best person to win. But I think that's when you've gotten like a bit of more idea about the kind of analysis you're doing. But it has like a number of data sets that you can try to play with. Because in the field of bioinformatics, basically what you're doing is analyzing data. So you want to have like data to play with. So it's one of those things to look out for. Just uh, create an account with them and get to know how they're running the platform. When we were introduced to bioinformatics, sorry, to machine learning and data science, I remember we were taught to open up cargo accounts and there were always these competitions that would come up. Of course, I didn't uh, continue so hard with cargo because I got data sets from like other research grants that were happening. But yeah, check it out. Then there is, of course, GitHub. GitHub like has, first of all, GitHub is like such a collection of different people doing different things it's easy for you to like reach out to someone maybe you search by topic and then they'll bring you like so many people that are doing different things if you want like a particular code if you have like a question you can always ask you can ask people to join you on like slack channels where all this information is being channeled out don't be shy about it to ask someone to join you in some of their communities and platforms that are out there for people in bioinformatics and data science. Then I wanted to also talk about like the data camp. So data camp is one of those uh, platforms that hosts trainings for people in data science, uh, also related to like bioinformatics because it's all data. And then um, you have to apply for it. There is one that came out that I applied for and got. It is still free of charge. So they give you like courses, you choose which um, modules you want to take on, if it is R programming, if it is Python, if you, you want to learn like any other language that there is, if it's Java, if it's all these coding tools, softwares and everything, there is plenty of it. So you apply and then go ahead. That's like data camp. And also the beauty about data camp is it has such introductory courses to like the programming languages, like, um, Again, Python and R. I think I'm repeating Python and R. It's because that's what I've trained in and it's easier for me to say that. But there are other programming languages that you might get fascinated about. So yeah, why not check it out and try out which ones resonate with you. Yeah. With bioinformatics, the other thing about it is you don't have to worry if you do not have like background in biology because we've had people in our class that were completely from computer science because it merges these two fields of computer science and then the biology background. Even if you came and joined and you didn't have any computer background at all, you can learn because the courses allow for you to be introduced to such beginner concepts so you can get the idea and then build on it. Anything can be learned. What's the word I want to use? Like anything is, what? My mind has gone blank for a minute. Anyway, like you can learn at whatever level you're on. But of course there are entry requirements for particular fields. But the thing I'm trying to mention here is that let's say you only have like a biological background and you've not done any coding, any computer science at any one point in life. I guess in point myself, like the only computer lessons I took, I think, like I, I knew basic computer things, but like not exactly coding. So I got introduced to the world of computer science and now I'm actually taking on machine learning. I'm doing all these things in data science that I'm happy to learn more about. But also we've had people that come and do not have any background in biology, any background in like health sciences, and then they get to learn. The principles are introduced to them because they are uh, introductory courses to molecular biology, to evolution. At whatever point you're on, you're able to learn different concepts, merge them, and then just keep advancing. I think the idea is for you to start, especially if you're interested, and then see how you can just grow your knowledge and understanding in any field. Because again, anything is teachable and anything can be learned if you dedicate your time and um, concentration to it. So yeah, let it not be one of those things that deter you. As it is in Africa, the current uh, standard is that we have had a lot of data that is collected from the labs, from all these clinical trials that are happening. There is so much data that is collected, but we have very few people 
on the continent to analyze such data and Africa itself is such a repository of data like we are so rich in terms of data because Africa itself has the highest uh, sense of diversity in terms of like genetic makeup so it's such an interesting field to be a data scientist in Africa at this point but mostly in terms of bioinformatics because it's such an avenue for you to explore like there is so much you can study because of the diversity because of the genetic makeup and so I think you just have to get started and find yourself like in the area. Maybe the thing I need to mention is that bioinformatics itself is like wide. So there are different parts like there is genomics, there is proteomics. This might sound like complex for the start, but once you get started, you'll get to know what each of these mean. But also some people go ahead and like break it down. For example, now me, at some point I took the route of studying infectious diseases and now I'm incorporating machine learning. For my master's project, I took on virology. I was studying um, HIV and how the virus mutates. And I don't know if I should tell you about my project, but like I'm trying to put it simply. We were trying to look for uh, variants and why some people are resistant to sorry why some people do not respond well to HIV drugs or to the ARVs so one of the reasons is because the virus is resistant to the drugs like it had mutated many times and so it was not responding to the drug as we were expecting them to so we were trying to find out what kind of variants are there are they low abundance variants you found very interesting results and i published a paper out of it i'm going to link it down for you to maybe read it but yes like what i'm trying to say you will keep evolving in your journey in bioinformatics you will start at some point then you'll find that maybe your interest has changed over time and that's completely fine sometimes you find like there is another interesting area you want to explore more so like there is a wide range of things for you to explore you can start out in maybe just doing basic um, bioinformatics and you're trying to do variant calling and things like that then you end up in like another field completely and that's perfectly fine because again as you grow as you mature in your career different avenues present themselves and why not take on such things if they're very interesting and they add on you and it's something that you want to take on so start somewhere and continue to grow the trajectory <laughs> is that the word <laughs> bioinformatics also involves like development of tools and softwares that allow for a seamless analysis of data because imagine if you were to sit to just look at a sequence of three billion base pairs for example like that would take you almost i don't even know how much time like it's not something you can do in um in like normal hours let's say for example they've sequenced like let's say a thousand people and you're on a project and there are not even as many people to analyze the data if you are going to do it manually that means you would take hours and hours and years and years to do this to simplify the work there are tools and softwares that allow for the analysis of such big data sets and that's where you as a bioinformatics scientist come in to try and use these tools integrate them into your analysis pipelines so that you're able to give results in a timely manner because you're trying to solve problems in the shortest time possible we cannot spend years and years trying to analyze let's say the person's genome like the human genome is so big to just be analyzed in a manual way so we need to employ such tools and the people that try to develop these tools that um, employ them and use them and put them in circulation of the bioinformatics scientists so that is how you can contribute to the world of data analysis and make an impact in the world and it's a nice avenue i have found purpose in that regard and i'm happy to share my journey with you and let you know that there is like a world of endless possibilities in bioinformatics I also just want to mention after I got introduced to this community of people that are doing bioinformatics it was just the perfect timing that very year before the end of it there was this grant that came up and so we were told to apply for the master's course that's how I applied and got uh, awarded my master's scholarship and after that I haven't looked back like it was a nice way for me to be in that space and I shared about this we are the pioneer class of bioinformatics in Uganda
something I really like to talk about because one of the things they were telling us is if you do a course and you're the pioneers, it's not many opportunities that are out there. But I want to tell you the different ways of looking at it because the idea was if you are the beginners of a course, it's like there are no, there are no opportunities created for you because people don't exactly understand what you do and this is what we were told. Of course, sometimes when you listen to people, and that's also the other thing, don't listen to very many people, especially when they're taking you off your path. Because honestly, at some point I saw thought about it and I was like, but I'm doing this new thing. What jobs am I going to do? Because like no one knows about it. But let me tell you, that particular thing that not many people knew about has brought me to so many other opportunities because I took, I took it on. So I want to say, sometimes you will hear this and that most of my friends and colleagues have gotten very nice placements very nice jobs i mean things have followed after that so you do your part and yeah again what's the worst that can happen at the end of the day sometimes you bet on yourself and take the chance as it comes and who knows it might land you to somewhere you want it to be so yeah take the chance sometimes yeah and i hope the first time you apply you're given because that's what everyone wishes for there are some things where it's like my first time to apply for a particular thing and i'm given there are times where i'm not given and it's all good like it's all good right we are not taking any hard feelings here we are appreciating the flow of life and knowing that certain things work out in particular ways and we may not understand why in the moment but later as time goes on it makes a lot of sense so do consider and remember that use the spaces you're in in the best way that you can. I know for this particular video, like I could go on and on and there are probably things I have left out. But again, because it wasn't scripted, I got a few minutes and I was like, let me capture this and put it out here. And I hope it sparks like conversations. It sparks like your imagination in a way that uh, works well for you. And I hope it has helped you in any way. And if you have particular questions, I'm also happy to answer these. But for now, I'll leave it at that. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to remind you that if you haven't, please do remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to watch this video until the end. Okay, now if you're watching this, you've already watched it until the end. <laughs> I appreciate it when you give me feedback. I appreciate it when I get to know the things you'd like for me to share more about. So do let me know in the comment section. Let's keep the conversation flowing. And I wish you well in your endeavors especially for the people that really asked for how to start a journey in bioinformatics. I hope this was very important and helpful and let's chat later in another video. See you in my next videos.